I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, a second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with a, another video. And today we are back doing another off-season reaction video or kind of NFL news. It's been a while since I've done one of these type of videos because guess what? Nothing has really happened that's been uh, really so important that I would have to sit down and make a video about it because people are asking, what do you think? How do you feel? You guys always want my initial reactions. I think the best place to go for that is Twitter, which of course will be linked down in the description below. Please follow that, twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. But Kareem Hunt has been signed by the Cleveland Browns. You can tell from the title, the thumbnail. If you have Twitter, I mean, you've known for a little while now. I had just sat down in class as this news came out, so... As soon as that ended, I came back home and sat down to do the video. So we're gonna we're gonna start with the the elephant in the room, which is uh, the off the field issues potentially for Kareem Hunt because you think you're signing a running back. Meanwhile, you might be signing a kicker. I don't know if you guys uh, are students of history, but Kareem Hunt uh, like tried to kick a lady and punt her. I, I don't know. Showed pretty good form. That's kind of. You know, regardless, um, I don't know, man. It's it's interesting because it's it's an isolated incident, you could say. So there's really nothing to indicate that he should be a major problem in the future. And apparently, he's been going to alcohol classes and anger management classes, and apparently, it's improved his mindset a lot, or so he says. I don't know about the. Uh, the the realism behind that because it's tough to say because anybody could say anything anybody could pretend to do anything but i think if we're operating under the assumption that this is an isolated incident then there should really be no cause for concern here if you're the cleveland browns we're going to read a statement by uh, john dorsey the general manager of the cleveland browns in a little bit as well as kareem hunt that the browns released via their twitter and um i would have to say that if you're a browns fan you should Maybe not be excited, although I think that's a fair response, but uh, you shouldn't be concerned at all, in my opinion, because I think Kareem Hunt's going to be on the straight and narrow. I really don't think you have any cause for concern here. Here's a statement from uh, Browns general manager John Dorsey regarding the signing. So he says, My relationship and interaction with Kareem since 2016 in college was an important part of this decision-making process, but we then did extensive due diligence with many individuals, including clinical professionals, to have a better understanding of the person he is today and whether it was prudent to sign him. There were two important factors. One is that Kareem Hunt took full responsibility for his egregious actions and showed true remorse. And secondly, just as importantly, he is undergoing and is committed to necessary professional treatment and a plan that has been clearly laid out. We fully understand and respect the complexity of questions and issues in signing a player with Kareem's history and do not condone his actions. Given what we know about Kareem through our extensive research, we believe he deserves a second chance, but certainly with the understanding that he has to go through critical and essential steps to becoming a perform, uh, performing member of this organization, aside from what the NFL determines with their ongoing investigation. We fully understand that Kareem is subject to discipline by the NFL. Here at the Browns, there is a detailed plan with expectations laid out that he understands and must follow because any similar incident will not be tolerated. We will support Kareem through this process and utilize our resources, however permitted, to help him become successful on and off the field as long as he continues to show the commitment necessary to represent this organization. So a long statement that I can uh, kind of break down very quickly for you guys, which is, you know, via the draft process in 2016. And John Dorsey knowing Kareem Hunt coming out of Toledo and maybe interviews at the Senior Bowl or what have you. They were totally willing to sign Kareem Hunt, bring him in in the second chance. They think he is a changed person due to professional opinion. And if anything similar like this happens, he's done, he's cut. If you guys do remember, John Dorsey would have been responsible for drafting Kareem Hunt with the Kansas City Chiefs. He was formerly... Um, a, in a managerial position there 
in Kansas City as the general manager from 2013 to 2016 before he accepted the job with the Browns. And excuse me if my voice, it shouldn't sound very much different, but my tongue's kind of getting in the way. I was chewing gum earlier and I bit down on it real hard. And um, I don't know, it kind of hurts. I, I bit into it real hard. I thought it was uh, going to be like cut in half almost, but only a little bit of blood. But I, I think that that statement kind of speaks for itself. It should be on the screen as you guys could have read that if you uh, would have liked to. So here's a statement from Kareem Hunt, where he says, First off, I would like to once again apologize for my actions last February. What I did was wrong and inexcusable. That is not the man I was raised to be, and I've learned a great deal from that experience and certainly should have been more truthful about it after the fact. I'm extremely grateful that John Dorsey, D, and Jimmy Haslam, and the Cleveland Browns organization are granting me the opportunity to earn their trust and represent their organization in the best way possible on and off the field. I am committed to following the necessary steps to learn and to be a better and healthier person from this situation. I also understand that the expectations that the Browns have clearly laid out and that I have to earn my way back to the NFL. I am a work in progress as a person, but I'm committed to taking advantage of the support systems that I have in place to become the best and healthier version of myself. Basically, he realized what he did was pretty bad and uh, he's not going to do it again. He's going to continue to work on himself, blah, blah, blah pretty much what he has to say. So now that that kind of uh, sociological element is off the table, we're going to talk about Kareem Hunt as a player. So he was one of my draft steals going into the 2016 draft. Really liked what he showcased at the University of Toledo. Fantastic balance and ability. And via circumstances that led for the top two Chiefs running backs at the time to be injured or not playing in that a week one opener against the New England Patriots, Kareem Hunt stepped into a gigantic role where he absolutely went off towards the Patriots, had an incredible game, and that's kind of been the story of his career so far. He's been a very, very good player, and he's performed at a very high level. He was a big part of why the Chiefs offense was so incredible. He can hurt you in so many different ways, both as a runner and a receiver. This past year, uh, in 11 games, rushed for 824 yards, seven touchdowns, averaging 4.6 per carry. Very good season, including 26 catches for 378 yards and seven touchdowns. Very, very good. And in 2017, of course, led the league in rushing yards with 1,327. Also had eight touchdowns. And then he had 53 catches for 455 yards and three touchdowns. So this is a this is a multi-talented dual threat running back if you will that can hurt you um really really badly in any way you want to utilize him the first thing i said on twitter when this happened is uh why did the brown sign him because you didn't really need to considering that you do have nick chubb who's a very very talented running back in his own right maybe not quite the receiver that kareem hunt is but a very very good running back nonetheless but you also have duke johnson jr juke johnson why would you go out and sign Kareem Hunt when you have that? Well, here's the easy answer. You're going to run a two-back setup with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb based on what you want to do. I'd say Kareem Hunt is going to be more of that third down running back, and they're probably going to split carries on either first and second down or whatever it would happen to be. And um, I mean, they're both like power backs, man. They both have similar body types and both have similar running styles. Nick Chubb being a little bit faster than Kareem Hunt. But they're both very talented. I mean, it's basically whatever running back you feel like running. You could put either one in in, in those scenarios. Nick Chubb could be a third down guy as well. A decent pass blocker. But again, maybe not quite the receiver that Kareem Hunt is. And then Duke Johnson becomes a slot receiver. When you look at the Cleveland Browns, they struggle very, very badly at the receiver position. Baker Mayfield had to deal with pretty much trash at the receiver position, I'm not going to lie. So much to the point that he was throwing the ball consistently to Brashad Perriman, a bust of the Ravens because he couldn't catch the football, and Baker's just putting it right on the money and making Brashad Perriman look pretty good. And you look at wide receiver, you take Jarvis Landry. Okay, that's fine. Brashad Higgins isn't anything exceptional. But then really the main point of this, aside from Brashad Perriman, is Antonio Callaway. You take in Antonio Callaway and you're like, Hey, that's a 5'10", 5'11", receiver. Why are you going to go ahead and move Duke Johnson to the slot? You got your slot receiver in Antonio Callaway. Well, not quite. Antonio Callaway has a slot build, as you guys may have saw me tweet, or may have seen me tweet with, like, Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham Jr., but they have outside traits. 
those boundary capabilities where they can go on the outside and perform in a very, very good uh, way and at a very high level in that position. So Antonio Callaway can certainly be an outside receiver and every down guy. He's just got to work on consistency, but he was one of the best receivers in this past draft class. And he had a pretty good rookie season. Obviously showcased some issues because he is a rookie. And he didn't play very much at Florida due to, due to suspension. But this past season, he had 43 catches for almost 600 yards, 5 touchdowns. A pretty solid season, given uh, his circumstances, let's say. And that was only in, let's see here, 14 or so games where he had a... Uh, at least a catch. So I think this is uh, a big difference maker. That can play on the outside. You move Duke Johnson into the slot, and he is a fantastic route runner. He has very good hands. Duke Johnson almost profiles more as a slot receiver than a running back. He is a very, very talented player. He is only 5'9", 210 pounds, but he's very, very quick, very shifty, and he has fantastic hands. He was utilized more as a receiver than a running back this past year basically, uh, due to his catch numbers. He only had 40 rushes for 201 yards, but that's still averaging five yards per attempt. Absolutely phenomenal. But he had 47 catches for 429 yards and three touchdowns. He's a guy that, again, can hurt you in so many different ways. So I think if you transition Duke Johnson Jr. into more of a receiver than a running back, go through training camp and, and, and things like that with him, taking the majority of his reps at slot receiver. Hey, you got a really, really talented player with versatility that, again, can hurt you in so many different ways. If you take a look at his snaps by position this past year, he had 336 snaps coming out of the backfield as a tailback, but 60 slots or 60 snaps in the slot, 61 snaps out wide. This is a guy that can play wide receiver, has experience playing wide receiver, and has decent receiver speed. 4-5-4 four, four is what he ran in the 40. And again, a very, very interesting player. And we'll have to see how Kareem Hunt fits into this offense. Basically, the way I see it, it's going to be what you see down in New Orleans with Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara or with... Um, you know, the Patriots, what they've done with, you know, running back by committee. That's kind of the way that the NFL looks like they're moving. A bunch of different running backs, keep everyone fresh, and have a bunch of different weapons you can go to. So I like the Kareem Hunt signing. It's only a one-year deal. It's not going to hurt you too much. He should fit into the offense really, really well. And I think even though you do have potential off-field issues, I think this is a low-risk, high-reward signing. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.